We're so glad that you're with us today. Thank you for being with us. This is Signs of the Time. My name is Reverend David Douglas. Today, we're going to be talking about a subject, and I'm going to entitle it, The Beast from the Middle East. And when you talk about the beast, you know, from the book of Revelation, you are talking about the Antichrist. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today, you know, for a few moments about the Antichrist. But John saw him and, and called him the beast. You know, Paul called him, you know, the man of sin, the son of perdition. And I believe Daniel uh, seen him far symbolically as the little horn. And he also saw him as the, uh, the fierce king. And also Daniel saw him as the king of the north. But we mostly know of him by the title, the Antichrist. The term anti, and, and, and the scriptures brings out about uh, the spirit of the Antichrist. And if you deny the Father and the Son, you know, you have that spirit of Antichrist. You're of that Antichrist spirit. So the beast from the Middle East. Let's look on in as far as to the scriptures, the word of God in Revelation chapter 13, uh, verses 1 through 8. John said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was like the feet of a bear, and his mouth as a mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him authority and his seat and great authority. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. They worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Power was given unto him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The beast here, like I said, represents really the Antichrist and even his kingdom. The question has always come up, who is the Antichrist and where does he come from? First of all, right now his identity has not been known. Really, nobody knows it right now. Paul said the rapture of the church would not come until the man of sin, the son of perdition, is revealed. The church is still here, so the Antichrist has not been revealed. But where he is from, I believe the Bible brings it out where he comes from. Now, the most popular theory or belief is that he will come from the revived 
Roman Empire. But let's search the scriptures to actually find it out. Looking at symbolism here, the beast, he said, is like unto a leper, and his feet like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. John, when we look at it, is seeing this in reverse of what Daniel saw in Daniel chapter 7 for the future going forward, so to speak. John is seeing in reverse because Daniel saw a, 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 the, the, the leopard, or excuse me, John saw had a body like a leopard, which was the Grecian Empire, which kind of was symbolic of the Grecian Empire. And that actually made up a, a little portion of even uh, modern-day eastern Greece, some of the islands, and even part of Turkey. The feet of the bear represents media Persia, you know, which is like, you know, modern-day Iran. And the mouth of the lion represents Babylon, or otherwise like modern-day Iraq. So it is showing a kingdom, and it's showing the Antichrist. The countries today that would really make up these three empires the Grecian, the Babylonian, and the Media Persian. These countries today, when, when we pull out a map, would actually be Middle Eastern countries, not European. Let's look again at Daniel chapter 2 and verse 7. I know I've taught on this even in the past. It tells us about a kingdom and what Nebuchadnezzar was seeing in this dream is really the same thing that God showed Daniel uh, in Daniel chapter 7. The first kingdom uh, that, 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 he, that Nebuchadnezzar saw in that great big image was Babylon, the golden head. And the second kingdom that Nebuchadnezzar saw was the Media Persia kingdom. And the third kingdom was the Grecian kingdom. But the fourth kingdom, uh, well, the Bible said, well, the fourth one was strong as iron. It said that kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires. Now, this is coming from the New Living Translation that it will smash and crush all previous empires just as iron smashes and crushes everything that it strikes. Rome, now get this, never conquered Babylon or even the Media Persian Kingdom. I mean, you could check this out. Check a Roman Empire map. It just does not fit. And it, and it, it is not the Roman Empire, the fourth kingdom. The kingdom that followed, that conquered uh, all this landmass was actually the Islamic Caliphate Empire. Let's look close at Daniel chapter 7, verses 8 and 9. He said, Therefore the he goat, waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. The he-goat here was the Grecian Empire, and the notable horn was Alexander the Great. Talks about that notable horn being broken. Otherwise, it's talking about Alexander the Great dying and he died at an early age, around 32 years of age. Said then his kingdom was divided between four generals, Cassander, 
which got the, 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 the Grecian area, Greece area. Lysimachus, he got the Turkey area. Seleucus, he got the Syria area. And Ptolemy got the Egypt area. Verse number 9 says, Out of one of uh, these four kingdoms came forth the little horn, which whacked exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the pleasant land. The pleasant land is Israel. So the Antichrist, listen to me right here. So the Antichrist will either come out of Greece, Turkey, Syria, or either Egypt. This little horn here that Daniel is seeing has got a dual fulfillment. It's got a near and a far fulfillment. I believe he was seeing also Antiochus Epiphanes, the fourth, which was a type and shadow of the Antichrist. He was evil. He was ruthless. And all this took place between Malachi, the years between Malachi and Matthew. Said, Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth came out of the Seleucid dynasty, that Seleucid empire. And that land covered uh, the southern part of Turkey, uh, most of Syria, northern Iraq and Iran. And its capital was actually named after Antiochus Epiphanes, I believe grandfather, and it was called Antioch. That was the capital of the Seleucid Empire. Today, Antioch, guess where it's at? It's in modern-day Turkey. And the he-goat mentioned here in this chapter, it really could mean Turkey. Because when it's talking about, you know, uh, Grecia, it's talking about Yavon. Yavon, that's J-A-V-N, also Y-A-V-N. It is the actually the, the western part of Turkey mainly. I mean, the Grecian Empire was even over there. It had a little bit of, 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 of the modern-day Greece and even the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey. You know what the Aegean Sea, what it actually means? It means the Goat Sea. So the he-goat in this chapter, I believe, could represent modern-day Turkey. This is the, the far fulfillment, the future fulfillment. Get this now, Istanbul, Turkey. At one time, it was called Constantinople, and that was named after Constantine, you know, one of the Roman, you know, rulers. But when uh, the Ottoman Empire, you know, conquered that area and, 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 re, and, and gained Constantinople, they changed the name to Istanbul, Turkey, I don't know, some, some years later. Now, the original name for Istanbul, Turkey, and Constantinople, the same city, the first name was actually called Byzantium. Byzantium. You've heard of the Byzantium of Empire, the Byzantium Empire? said this, and said which actually the Byzantium, that, that city there, like I said, Istanbul, Turkey today, the first name of it was Byzantium. And that came from a Thracian personal name, Byzas. B-Y-Z-A-S. And it means he goat. So that's today in modern day Turkey. The king of the north the Bible said in Daniel 11, he was actually from the Seleucid dynasty. Again, that dynasty covered parts of Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Another scripture that I want to bring out in Revelation 13, uh, verse 2, part B, get this, and the dragon, which is the devil, gave him, gave the beast, the Antichrist, his power and his seat, otherwise his throne. And he gave him great authority. Now, Revelation 2, 12, 13 tells us where that seat is. 
Here is talking about the church at Pergamos. And the Lord said in verse 13 of chapter 2 of the book of Revelation, I know thy works, otherwise Pergamos, where thou dwellest, where thou live, otherwise it's talking about the, the area of Pergamos. He said, even where Satan's seat is. Satan's seat, when Revelation was being written here, was at Pergamos. Guess where Pergamos is at? We're doing a little bit of, of geography today, I reckon. Pergamos is in modern-day Turkey. That's where it was located. So seat, Satan's seat uh, is in Pergamos, modern-day Turkey. So one day the Antichrist is thrown. We'll be there too. Now that don't mean that he'll be just ruling from there. I don't know if it's just saying that he would be coming from there. I really don't know. But I believe it would be somewhere in the Middle East. Let, let me go on a little bit. The Antichrist throne, I believe, will be there too. So the Bible said the little horn came out of one of those four countries, Daniel 8 9. So either Greece, Turkey, Syria, or Egypt is where the little horn will come out. And the beast kingdom in Revelation 13, really it covers mainly Middle Eastern countries. So I believe it is clear to say the beast, the Antichrist, will come from the Middle East, not from the Roman Empire. Daniel 9, 26 said it talks about the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The prince that is to come here is none other than the Antichrist. What about the people of the prince? They are the ones, the Bible said here, that was going to destroy the city of Jerusalem and, and the temple and that took place in A.D. 70. Josephus, the famous Jewish historian that was there at that time, recorded, said this, quote, So Vespasian, Vespasian, maybe I'm pronouncing that name right, sent his son Titus. Titus was the commander, the general who said, who came into Syria, where he gathered together the Roman forces with a considerable number of auxiliaries from the kings in that neighborhood. So Titus did not bring Roman men. He did not bring any from Rome or Italy, that, that area. He recruited men mainly from Syria. And we can find out that the legions, the Roman legions that attacked Jerusalem and burned Jerusalem and destroyed and burnt the temple was the fifth legion called the Macedonian. They came from the area of Judea. The tenth legion, I believe, was called Fratensis. They came from Syria, those men did. The third legion is called Gallica. They came from Syria. The twelfth legion came from Asia Minor slash Syria. So the majority of these soldiers were from the Middle Eastern countries. And I think even Saudi Arabia at that time even sent some in there. So if the people from the Middle East were that nationality, the people of the prince, if the people that was from the Middle East were of that nationality of where the Antichrist will come from, so must the beast or the Antichrist be from the Middle East. If the people, which they were, Josephus recorded it, 
I witnessed it that, that most of them came from Syria and other areas, Egypt, but that they were Middle Eastern. So the Antichrist, the beast, has got to come from the Middle East. So I believe that we should quit focusing on Europe and the European Union. They talk about all these nations come together, and I think they done probably uh, gone beyond as far as 10 nations that, that are forming the European Union. We should re really quit focusing on Europe and even the European Union and start focusing on the Middle East because that is where the Antichrist will arise from. Thank you today for being with us. If this has been a blessing, study the Word of God. Study it for yourself. But if this has been a blessing, we need your help. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have some that's already, you know, subscribe. We need more subscribers. This will help. I believe what they call the algorithm. It will help us as far as, you know, uh, to, to get probably more viewers. So please subscribe. It does not cost anything. Just click on that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. That helps a lot. And please make a comment. Please make a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Our comments are open. And remember, Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass and the signs of Christ's coming are unfolding right before our very eyes. But Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads for your redemption draw up now. Thank you for being with us today on Signs of the Time. God bless you. We love you. We're praying for you in Jesus' name.